The most potent medicine in your house is literally sitting in your cabinet and costs you next to nothing. It combats fatigue, inflammation, stress, and even cancer. Right here, you are looking at a drastic improvement in lung cancer simply by including baking soda in the water of animals. Hard to believe, but it's true. Baking soda was able to reduce circulating cancer cells, improve survival, and shrink tumors. Baking soda also prevented the deathly spread of cancer, known as metastasis. Baking soda added to the drinking water in this experiment completely prevented prostate cancer in 70% of animals and left the rest with minimal signs of cancer, cutting the total tumor cell load down to almost nothing. Here's another study showing that literally injecting baking soda into a breast tumor shrinks it and improves it in every measurable way in animals within an hour. One 79-year-old man with worsening kidney and liver cancer was fed up with his doctor's orders, rejected conventional cancer treatment, and instead took three heaping tablespoons of baking soda per day. Six years later, his cancer had shown no signs of further progression, his weight remained stable, and his quality of life improved, reportedly walking two miles every day. Beyond cancer, baking soda improves insulin resistance, the lack of glucose metabolism and diabetes that leads to high blood sugar. Many people report increased energy levels and resistance to fatigue when taking it, likely due to baking soda's ability to improve metabolism. We'll get to specific dosing quantities of baking soda for these benefits a bit later. It's even used in hospital settings to help treat brain fog, that feeling of tiredness and lack of mental clarity that so many deal with. In fact, baking soda improves energy metabolism so much that it's literally classified as a performance enhancing drug. No kidding, in horse racing, baking soda increases power output, delays fatigue, decreases soreness, and improves stamina. The practice of giving baking soda to horses, otherwise known as milkshaking, is literally banned in racing competitions because it's considered unfair. These findings have been routinely shown in humans as well, with hefty doses of baking soda spread throughout the day improving strength, endurance, and explosiveness. Baking soda's prowess doesn't stop there. It rapidly reduces inflammation, with researchers stating that it's potentially a really safe way to treat inflammatory disease especially for autoimmune conditions like arthritis. Just one third of a teaspoon of baking soda shifted the immune profile, transforming immune cells from inflammation promoting to regulatory and anti-inflammatory within hours. The scientists claim that baking soda's ability to reduce inflammation was critical to a broad range of diseases, including chronic kidney disease, cardiovascular disease, atherosclerosis, irritable bowel syndrome, type 2 diabetes, and neurodegenerative diseases. Meanwhile, baking soda's ability to calm excess immune activation was said to be relevant in conditions like allergy, asthma, multiple sclerosis, diabetes, and hypertension. Baking soda is also a potent stress reducer, showing the capability to lower stress hormones like cortisol. Many report sleeping better when taking baking soda, possibly due to this calming anti-stress effect. Going one step further, baking soda baths have recently been shown to be an absolute godsend for sleep. The bath increased sleep efficiency, reduced the time to fall asleep, reduced waking during sleep, increased total sleep time, and reduced markers of stress. Carbon dioxide, which we produce when ingesting baking soda, has potent anti-stress effects of its own. For instance, anxiety is the result of low oxygen, which causes hyperventilation, high adrenaline, and low blood CO2. But CO2 supplied back can lower the stress response by aiding in oxygen transport. This is why people breathe into a bag when they have panic attacks. The carbon dioxide that is rebreathed rapidly lowers stress, but you can get a similar effect just by taking baking soda. Baking soda even bolsters antioxidant defenses, as it was able to increase glutathione status, our body's master anti-cancer detoxifying antioxidant compound. Baking soda is an excellent way to aid in detoxification, as it was even used in treatment in many drug poisonings. Even the American Academy of Clinical Toxicology and the European Association of Poison Centers and clinical toxicologists put out a position statement recommending the use of baking soda for poisonings as it increases their excretion. 
Baking soda can also help your digestion, as many people report a gentle laxative effect of around one teaspoon of baking soda in warm water. Baking soda has been shown to increase stomach acid production in the long term, and this acid is vital for killing bacteria and breaking down food, two major pluses for your digestion. Baking soda is an awesome tool for dental health as well, preserving the enamel from being degraded and having a whitening effect. It even kills bacteria that cause gingivitis, cavities, and dental plaque. But how is baking soda able to work in so many different ways? Baking soda is also known by its chemical name, sodium bicarbonate. Bicarbonate is the body's primary compound used to balance the levels of acidity or pH of cells and the fluids that surround them. How acidic the various components of the body are is a primary determinant of how it functions. The pH regulates everything down to the molecular and chemical level. It influences how fast enzymes work, how proteins fold, how our hormones signal, and how our metabolism functions. I can attest to this working in biomedical research myself. Anytime someone didn't properly pH a reagent, you'd literally have to restart the entire experiment because it completely messes up how an animal, organ, or cell will function. There's a reason why acids and bases is one of the first things they teach you in high school chemistry. It doesn't get more fundamental than that. This acidity has a few main sources, but the primary one is lactic acid, which is produced from the incomplete metabolism of glucose or carbohydrate. This metabolic glitch was characterized about a century ago by Nobel Prize winning scientist Otto Warburg as being the prime cause of cancer. Any carcinogen you can think of works at least in part by impairing the breakdown of carbohydrate into carbon dioxide and instead forming lactic acid. High extracellular acidity is a prime contributor to cancer and bicarbonate, otherwise known as baking soda in the sodium linked form, is our body's way of reducing this acidity. It is our physiological buffer. Acidity increases the spread of cancer throughout the body, suppresses immunity yet drives inflammation, and promotes aggressive types of cancer. This has been shown time and time again. Reducing acidity is responsible for cancer survival, while increasing acidity predicts cancer spread and tumor recurrence. The tumor extracellular environment being highly acidic is not some fringe idea either. Again, as a PhD student in biochemistry at a major university, we were taught in our cancer biology class that the tumor microenvironment is hypoxic, meaning it lacks oxygen. And this goes hand in hand with it being highly acidic. Pharmaceutical companies are now trying to target this mechanism with new drugs, but the ultimate way to buffer this acidity has been hiding in plain sight this whole time. Another source of excess acidity is actually in the gut, as many gut bacteria normally produce acids, but this can get out of hand quickly, as it does in so many people with digestive issues. This extracellular acidity directly impairs your metabolism, which not only makes you feel more stressed and tired, but also is at the core of your disease risk. Acidity alone induces insulin resistance, the lack of glucose uptake into cells in diabetes that leads to high blood sugar. One of the reasons this happens is that acidity poisons our mitochondria, the cell compartments that break down sugar into energy. Otto Warburg himself had stated that the only thing necessary to cause cancer was to injure the mitochondrial energy production process. He stated one way to go about this would be to reduce oxygen delivery to cells. This is actually a process regulated by carbon dioxide, which displaces oxygen from our oxygen carrying red blood cells so it can be used in the mitochondria to burn carbohydrate. Once again, baking soda has you covered, having shown the ability to raise our levels of carbon dioxide. Acidity also has a key effect on our immune system, as it is high in autoimmunity and allergies, promotes pro-inflammatory pain mediators, and dampens immunity against pathogens. Yet baking soda is there to remedy the issue, acting as an anti-inflammatory. It also acts as an anti-stress substance. Two of our primary classes of stress hormones, the glucocorticoids, including cortisol, and the mineralocorticoids, reduce our systemic acidity. But baking soda does that for you, which gives it the power to reduce cortisol and mineralocorticoids like aldosterone, and subsequently opposes feelings of anxiety, restlessness, heart pounding, and hyperventilation. Excess acidity can also impair your detoxification capacity. The blood, kidneys, and urine must be at a certain level of acidity to detoxify properly. Alkalinizing agents like baking soda can help restore proper detoxification homeostasis. Now, how would you go about taking it? 
Well, it's obvious that baking soda can be a Swiss army knife for your overall health, but if you really want to take your wellness to the next level, you'll want to join PRISM. Our team will provide an in-depth analysis of your health to individualize a plan that best suits your goals, whether it's fat loss, improving digestion, sleep, stress, libido, or preventing disease. Click the top right of the screen here or the link in the description for your first free call to learn more. There's a pretty broad range of doses of baking soda depending on the use. I think starting at half a teaspoon, three grams, dissolved in water, and working your way up slowly is a good option. At this low dose, there's a good chance for a positive effect with minimal risk. In athletes, the dose goes up to as much as 25 grams or 1.5 tablespoons. Cancer patients have used even more. If you're going to go that high, I would definitely split it up into multiple doses. Too much at once, or even in general, can cause loose stools or even diarrhea. Take it away from meals as it will temporarily lower stomach acid. You also can overdo it and become too alkaline, so I would definitely start low and go up as needed. You can even get some urinary pH strips to ensure this doesn't happen if that's a concern for you. Baking soda is an affordable, low risk, and potentially highly effective remedy for various conditions and goals. On this channel, we explore these fascinating, timeless solutions and blend them with the modern research. Don't let them fool you. Subscribe to our channel for more exciting videos like this one.